you are on a uh, in a container being shipped over to the uh, what is it? The shelter of the righteous, which is the island held by the uh, the order of the Levithian. So to pick up some light water uh, that uh, that your contact uh, supposedly had already gotten for you at this point. Yeah, so... Uh, are you going to knock out and... Uh, Knock out the crew and basically take their places, or how do you are you going to use these disguises? Because you can't just walk out onto the ship essentially with these disguises. Otherwise, it's like, why are there twice as many of us as there were before? That is, that's a non-starter. That's a non-starter. <laughs> or are you just going to use them once you get to your destination to wander around the docks? Probably use them when we get to our destination. I think okay. that the guy that we met in the bar said that we could, um, he could get us over there in a container, and then we could stealth out and mingle over yeah, there. Yeah, Smitty said he'd get it. He, you're in the container at this point, essentially. So. Yeah. So if we don't need to knock anybody out and cause a disturbance earlier, I'd say that's probably a good thing. Okay. So you wait in the container patiently. So. Uh, you can feel the rumble of the engines uh, as the high-powered uh, tug uh, jets across the water at high speeds, and it's probably less than a 10 or 15 minute ride uh, before you arrive at your destination. The, uh, the engines come to uh, quiet, the rumbling stops, uh, you feel a large uh, lurch as the boat uh, docks, uh, and you can feel your container being offloaded. Uh, you can also overhear conversations of the dock crew at this point. This the container itself is not incredibly well, uh, incredibly well sound sealed, uh, soundproofed. Uh, you, as all of you are just uh, sitting still and quietly uh, and trying not to knock over, knock over anything or bang against the sides. The you can feel a crane sort of latch onto the top of your cargo container, and you're getting hauled up in the air and. Uh, Thing being plopped down on top of another stack of cargo containers. So you definitely feel you didn't get put down on the ground, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, you do overhear this. It's like, where are all the... Where are all the, the dock workers? They're all missing. It's like, it's like there's the automated cranes are going, basically, but I don't see anybody, any, uh, anybody on the docks. Doesn't matter, dude. It's like, we're just paid to deliver, uh, deliver crates and leave, so... So, it's, uh, it, it, uh, as soon, then you hear maybe about eight, nine minutes later, maybe, a t uh, maybe maximum ten minutes later, the, the engines of the, uh, the, uh, tug, uh, roar to life, and the, uh, the boats become, so, like, th th in this convoy of ten, start zooming away one after the other, essentially, and you can hear... Their uh, their high powered engines rooming off into the distance. Uh, they're sort of uh, you get a little bit of seepage of like diesel fumes or like petrol fumes uh, like permeate the air around here from the ships. But other than that, uh, it is deathly quiet. <laughs> you don't hear people moving around out there. Uh, which you find weird. Uh, aren't they supposed to be unloading uh, containers or whatever? But uh, this looks like a good time to basically get out of your container. Hey, what are you guys doing? Who's got good um, stealth to check on the um, situation oh, yeah. outside? Oh, um, <clears throat> pass without a trace. Let me cast it all. Oh, out. yes, please. But uh, you have to be near me for that to happen. Okay, though. so everybody, is everybody going to just, like, first of all, essentially, uh, you crack the door to the container, uh, you, un uh, you unlatch the mag seal, and you peer out the door. 
you are <laughs> you're annoyingly high off the ground. You're like easily like forty <laughs> feet off the ground. Uh, <laughs> so you're on top of a stack of containers. <laughs> oh, it's a good thing I have featherfall. Oh wait, I don't. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can fly, so you have uh, right, you have yeah. you have uh, you have basically flight boots. So <laughs> I grab so I pull some feathers off me and throw it at Ronan. There's your feather fall. Oh yay! Oh wait, I can fly. Ha! <laughs> I'm going to cast fog cloud. All right. So you fog up the uh, general area so you can all jet out the back at this point. Uh, I assume fog clouds aren't uncommon in this area since it's a all right. planet. I like that. Did you bring uh, did you bring hover bikes on the off chance you need them, or are you hoping that they have vehicles if you need to jet out into the ocean? <laughs> I brought mine. I always bring mine, just to be on the safe side. Okay. It's uh, this is also one of those things. Basically, if you can't reload on this container, that that item is just lost. Keep that in mind. <laughs> so. Is there like a mod or something that I could get that will allow me to um? Like fold up my uh, my hover bike. Ham Ham didn't like have any containers that it hyper dimensional containers that he's at least what he's willing to sell you that were that large. Yeah, we had to go with it. I think. Um, you had to go with the the century the standard five by five. There should be lots of of uh, ways to move around over here that we can steal. Um, because I don't, you know, we may need to go places where we can't carry the hover bikes. What do you guys think? No, I mean, well, like a, modi there, like a modification for my bike. This is one of those things. It's like, if you have it, you can have it as a backup to get off the island. Let's put it that way. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're swimming if you can't find a ride. <laughs> or you're having to shoot your way out the front, which is also not very pleasant. Okay, let's have them. <clears throat> so they're parked outside somewhere? Well, I'm saying it's your call whether or not you have them with you. The cargo container has enough room for it. Yeah, let's have them, guys. What do you think? Is that good? Worst so, I mean, like, worst, we lose them and we buy a new one somewhere else with all the money we're going to make. Okay. I'd, I'd rather do that than have a total party kill on the ocean, you know? Yeah, that works for me. Okay, so you have your hover bikes uh, stowed in here at the moment. Uh, all right, so you slowly... Uh, you either use ropes or basically various people fly their way down to the ground. Uh, the... Your uh, your repulsors at this point are like creating uh, interesting swirly vortices in the fog cloud. Uh, it gives you some amount of comfort that the, no one can see you, but also you can't see them. So you're trying to figure out. <laughs> you land. You begin uh, to uh, to fan out to to look uh, to scout the area. I need uh, perception rolls at disadvantage for everybody. I got six. Okay. No, it would be a 16. Okay. So you're fanning out and looking for stuff at this point. Uh, the first thing you realize is, like, those, uh, the shipmen, uh, the cargo guys basically were right. There's no one on this dock. Uh, which, again, you also find weird at this point. Uh, and eventually you uh, find out why as you, uh, like, see a partially, you notice a partially open cargo container, you flip it open, and there are dead people in there. <laughs> oh, fun. Can I do, like, a medicine check to see if I can tell why they're dead, or is it really obvious? It is very obvious. Oh, they've okay. been, uh, they've been bitten to death, essentially, by something with a bite radius about the, the size of human neck, so maybe about four or five inches across. Uh, and whatever it is, basically, is horribly freaking poisonous because you can see, like, necrotiza necrotization, essentially, of the flesh wherever, basically, some of the pointy teeth basically went in. <laughs> Sharp, pointy teeth! So, this ain't good. you're guessing it's a reptile serpent of some sort, basically. Well, I guess you should roll nature for that, but... 
your your general guess it's it's some sort of reptile given it it seems to have a longer set of fangs in the front and smaller fangs on the sides okay that's a 23 a nature so. yeah, yeah. oh you got it all right so you definitely got it so uh whatever it is doesn't have claws uh you do see like sort of scuff marks on their suits which sort of indicates that it's serpentine whatever it is You're wondering if uh, some uh, of those Levithian spawn you saw earlier didn't get out and kill these people, but uh, they seem to be awfully organized for what appeared to be the sort of like mindless beast. <laughs> because it's like era all the ki their kills have been carefully hidden away at this point. Is anybody good with Arcana do we or history? Oh, I've got history. Can I do a history and see if I know anything about an animal on this planet that might do something? Sure. I'll just say you're the intelligent character. And that's 26 for history. Wow. Uh, so there's a native species uh, colloquially, no colloquially known as the Deep Ones mm -hmm. uh, that used to basically uh, be the native sentient species on this planet until the Imperium wiped them out. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's still ass assumed that they still exist, uh, but uh, they wouldn't be so foolish as to uh, basically show their their fishy eyes around here, basically, <laughs> lest we basically have to show another show of force, which is how the archipelago was created uh, on the uh, on uh, what is it on here? This uh, the archipelago used to be a large landmass. But now it's basically a chain of islands after having been the fusion bombed into pieces. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so... In theory, essentially, it could be a native species of some sort, uh, but wh whatever it is is obviously sentient and can plan, so it's not an animal of any sort. <laughs> It has at least has sentience and enough brain power to know that to hide its kills rather than just kill. Rather just kill people and leave dead people all over the place. Uh, so it shows some amount of uh, insight and planning at this point. So, uh, what at the same time you don't see any. Uh, at the same time you don't see any modern weapon wounds like swords or blades or energy weapons or projectile shooters. Or uh, having been used on these people. So all these people got killed by fangs. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so after Tree described this creature, would it be familiar enough to me for me to cast a locate creature? Not particularly, but... Uh, yeah. You could basically use locate object on it. Let's say it's poison, for instance. Yeah, I was That's... about to ask the next thing. Like, can I see this poison in front of me? And obviously this came from the creature. I'm going to cast uh, locate object on this poison. Or I guess okay. technically it's venom. Venom is injected, okay. poison is ingested. Yes. All right, so uh, you... Guess locate object. It's uh, whatever it is is still on the docks. It's, uh, in fact, uh, you get, feet. like... You get, like, you get, get easily, like, a dozen pings back. Uh, it's, like, in various different directions away from you. Uh, not in your particular area, but uh, they seem to be spreading out away from your particular location at the moment. So the closest of them is maybe about uh, is maybe about five hundred feet away. If the dock itself, the motion, like the dock itself, you know is the huge. Of its movement. Yeah. So I'm saying you, there's there's at least a dozen pings you get back. So there's a mm -hmm. dozen things that. That uh, so there's at least a dozen of these things out there. Oh, great! <laughs> and I didn't keep track of them at least for the next ten minutes. Yep. All right. So our objective still is to retrieve this case. Are we smuggling the person out or just the object? It was just going to. Well, be you the just object. need the case itself. Yeah, he said the the contact person said that they were going to stay and see what else they could do. So we just needed to take the stuff, and I guess the question would be whether they uh, poisoned their contact as well that was supposed to meet us down here. 
Mm -hmm. So at this point, basically, you probably need to go find your contact and secure him. Make sure he doesn't get, he hasn't been killed at this point. We have a signal because you do the quick scan. You can do the quick scan of maybe the, about the dozen bodies uh, that you can find in the local area that you're in. Essentially, none of them are him, so which is good. But uh, at the same time, essentially, there's some dangerous. Uh, invasion force in that, that's uh, combing the docks at this point uh, and if you're if you if they find your contact before you do probably something bad is gonna happen to him I think we had a way to signal them once we were inside was that right yes you do okay so why don't, uh, who had the signal thing was that me yes you that's probably great. you oh, probably okay. had it yeah probably. mom have you seen my signal device Okay, so I'm going to try and signal our contact and see if we can get a location on him. All right, so... Uh, there, you uh, you basically have this uh, sort of holo direction device. Uh, it's mm -hmm. sort of indicating that you should start... Uh, it's sort of just giving you a arrow and a direction you should head in at this point. Are there any creatures in that direction? Yes. Well, approach with caution. Okay. Um, you emerge from your fog cloud. Uh, it's a relatively clear and sunny day at this point. The docks mm -hmm. are... Uh, the automated cranes are moving around. Uh, cargo containers. I need a... Uh, what is it? I need an int save from the, a lot of you, essentially, to... Uh, Determine a safe pass through a path through the contain the automated container movement, uh, lest you get crushed by a cargo container. Ten. Ten. That was my first nat one of the evening, guys. Although I can, if that's going to flunk, I can add five onto it. Got five on it. I got twelve for intelligence save. Okay, well everybody's still flunking at this point. Uh, so even okay, so, so fifteen flunks. Five to the still flunks. Yes. All right. You uh, you don't notice the uh, everything no, is, pat, is, pa is painted. All the ground and around your general area is painted in red and orange stripes. You're trying to figure out. It's like, does that mean cargo goes here or doesn't go here? Uh, as you go, okay. Maybe uh, maybe the yellow stripe means cargo doesn't go here. Oh, maybe the open spaces aren't where where the the cargo containers go. As you. As you're sort of scooting along and just like, like okay, well the b behind us got boxed in by containers, uh, we're still okay. And then you notice like the front of us got boxed in containers. Uh, this is slightly bad. <laughs> it's like, and then the, you start seeing the basically space that you're in start to get filled in by container. <laughs> uh oh, uh, can hey, I start guys, trying well, to lift people out? Okay, so how are you scrambling out of this valley of containers at this point? So, well, I can fly. Who can't fly? I can I fly. I'm the only one that can't fly. Out of your well, place. we have our hoverbikes, right? Didn't we bring our hoverbikes? I'm saying you're leaving the. You probably left them behind as a way as the fast escape route. Uh, okay. I doubt you're actually flying them around the docks because they're really loud. Okay. <laughs> they're really... And we left some sort of a marker so we could find that container again, I feel sure. Yes, yeah, so you could have a location okay. marker on your container so you can find it. You parked here. Okay, Asgore's the only one to basically... Oh, never mind. Asgore has like 3D maneuvering gear, so all of you can get out of here relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, deck save, DC-12 to get out of there. For all of us? Everybody, yes. Got it. Now it's a 16. Woohoo! Unnatural 20. Yay. Using oh, dexterity yeah. checker save. Save. Save, got it. Oh no, I got a 10. I rolled All right, so, uh. I can put five on it. flies up, critical. basically, doesn't notice yeah. the looming container coming up straight behind him as, uh,. It sort of smashes him into the ground for uh, 26 points of damage. And then uh, I need somebody to grab uh, Tearshot. I need somebody to make a athletics or acrobatics check to grab Tearshot before he gets crushed under a container. I'll do it. 
Thank you. I'm sure that will be better than mine. No, it won't. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're just going to say you have Furic victory at this point. So both of you take 20 points of damage as, uh, like, you manage to pull Tirshan out from the container he just before he gets squashed by the container he's under. Uh, well, only to get clipped by another. Only to get clipped by another container, basically that's coming laterally and different from a different direction. So I just <laughs> but you're both free at this point. Of damage. So uh, first one was twenty six, second one was twenty. Oh, that's gonna hurt. I'm gonna feel that tomorrow. Yep. Or, uh, other than the, the Tirshan basically is readjusting his mechanical lower beak as it's like as it's been bent out of shape. It's like ah. <laughs> And Ronan basically is like, well, the front part of my my helm is a little bit flatter than it was before, which is a little bit flatter than every time I get hit in the head. <laughs> As he's bending bending out the nose piece. <laughs> I'm probably going to eventually um, upgrade something here. All right. So you eventually get above the level of the... Uh, you eventually get above the level of the uh, work where crates are being stacked. It's, it's a little visible, but it's just like you're not feeling really comfortable basically being at low, below the level essentially where, cra where where cargo containers are being moved around at really high speeds. Okay, so no one was able to necessarily figure out the pattern of the uh, how the cargo containers are move being moved, so you're just sort of scooting along at the top most level of the containers. Uh, stealth rolls at disadvantage for everybody. But we still get the plus ten, right? Yes. But mine's already at this venge anyway because of my armor. And, and mine because of my armor. 30. So that's a twenty-two. Mm, I rolled a fifteen and an eighteen. I rolled pretty well. Um. I didn't. Do we have a oh inspiration? Do we have like a minute of downtime? Not particularly. <laughs> no. Okay. I'm gonna be keeping an eye out for a minute of downtime, like where we can just sit there and take a breather for like a minute. I'm pointing out from a practical standpoint, whatever this invasion force is, they're already moving out pretty quick, uh, and that they stop for a moment and then then move on, stop for a moment and move on, and you're guessing whenever they're stopping for a moment, they're killing somebody. <laughs> they're killing somebody. Mm -hmm. Which I still have locate creature up, however long it's been. It's I have it for ten minutes. All right, roll a concentration check for me. Right. Oh, yeah. 16 and okay, 21. Fine. So I took damage twice, didn't I? Yes, that's right. Alright, so you're fine. Uh, it's like... Uh, you zip across the level, the top level of containers and eventually drop down into an area that's marked in white paint and you're going... And not seeing any containers being landed in this area. Okay, white is safe. Uh, and anything else you're guessing basically is some sort of like c code marking for basically different uh, storage uh, storage regime for the cargo containers. Uh, you uh, you walk around these white paths. Uh, eventually, uh, are you close it, trying to close in on one of the serpent people, or what are you doing? I think we were trying to find our contact. Yes, gonna, or you're going to follow away. your directional device that is going to lead um, you to your contact. Yeah. While avoiding the serpent people. Exactly. I think we need to, like... Okay, that, these those two. things don't seem to be mutually exclusive from each other. As you pass through uh, towering uh, piles of cargo containers, uh, you're going... Uh, now that you've found essentially what safe looks like, uh, the... Uh, you're finding essentially that uh, that uh, Tirshan's locate uh, object and your uh, directional uh, device are beginning to converge on each other. Okay, Sounds so like we need to uh, beat feet and save that content. All right. So, uh, are you going to pick up the pace, basically, and uh, give up on stealth at this point, uh, or are you going to keep with stealth? If you keep with stealth, you're going to have to go slower. 
I say screw stealth, let's go. Yeah, I think really valuable I, time. There, there's no point in being here if the contact is dead and the contents are lost. Because yep. then the whole mission goes down. And then we owe that guy back on the planet for all of those passages on the cruise ship, which couldn't have been cheap. All right, so uh, you beat feet. Uh, let's see here. I need a... All right. Uh, let's go with uh, athletics or acrobatics for everybody. Uh, DC 15. Okay, that's a 21. That's an unnatural 20. Nice game. 21. Good. All right. Uh, you go zooming through just below the top level of the stacks at this point. Uh, you whip around a corner. You see this. You see this weird hydra-looking thing with eyeless hydra thing, essentially that has a whole bunch of like snaky tendrils, uh, sort of sprouting out of this weird bulbous body with uh, like three little tripod legs. <laughs> uh, as it. Uh, as it moves surprisingly quick for its uh, weird, uh, ungainly uh, movement, locomotion method, where it sort of like stumbles forward with the two legs and then scoots with the back one and stumbles forward with the two legs again. Uh, uh, and every so often you see it basically wink out of existence and then pop into existence again, essentially a few, maybe 10 or 15 feet away from where it was before. Oh, Have great. I seen this method of movement before? Like, do I recognize what he's doing? Uh, let's see. You can roll Arcana to basically recognize what it is, I guess. But a Hydra? Nine. I rolled a four. You have no idea what this is, uh, other than it basically looks otherworldly to the point... Uh, other than it looks something looks like something otherworldly to the point of basically being from the warp. So this could be a demon of some sort, not just a local. <laughs> Do I have time to okay. press fairy fire on it before we get into uh, uh, shenanigans? Well, you're flying above it. It does not seem to be okay. cognizant of you at the moment. Because ah, uh, it doesn't seem to have any eyes. <laughs> Fireball! Okay. Okay. Frick first. first. <laughs> okay, but uh, your uh, look, uh, your look, uh, your directional device essentially pointing to your contact is pointing mm -hmm. sort of like straight, straight ahead. Uh, down this sort of like white corridor of uh, cargo containers at this point. So uh, you're guessing you're not too far away because there's a there's only so much further you can go at this point. There, the wall of the uh, the wall at the edge of the the sort of seawall that sort of makes the edge of the uh, shipping container area is uh, maybe only about uh, 100 feet away. Question: Is my locate cre uh, object still up? Yes, it's pointing right at the creature. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah, that. And uh, are they? Like, can I tell? Like, are they converging on this spot? Like, are they all going for our our contact? No, or they uh, they seem to be spreading out. <laughs> Got it. So we're only dealing with this one. Okay. 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 Yes. I will convey this information for the team. We um coordinated takedown time. I send back. Can I use a fireball on it? Go ahead. Our objective is still relatively stealth, so... Yeah, because it hasn't noticed us yet, right? No, it has not. We don't need to attack this. You we don't just need see to anything on, on it that sort of looks like eyes or light sensory, uh, sensory pods or whatever. It just simply seems to be this smooth, like, grayish, slimy uh, uh, flesh, essentially, uh, that makes up the whole creature. <laughs> Yeah, I think if we cast a fireball on it now, then all the ones might converge on us. Let's see if we can make it to our contact. Hang on. And I have an idea. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to cast silence on this thing. Like, oh. basically on the on the ground, right in front of the creature. Not ritual. Just instant cast. So it's not going to hear us or anything else. I like it. 20 foot dome of no sound directly on it. Okay, it seems and to wander around. Uh, 
it, it seems to be wander around confused uh, for a little bit as it sort of randomly uh, attacks attacks cargo containers uh, next to it, uh, ripping out like large screeching chunks of metal. Well, never mind it. No, screeching silent chunks of metal <laughs> out of like uh, probably uh, eighth inch thick uh, steel containers. You're going. Whatever it is, it's strong. <laughs> and then I will give the cue to Ronin, now you can fireball. <laughs> I start jumping, I start like clapping with glee. I try to calm him down. We're trying to be a subtle here. Okay, well, roll to hit. So. I thought fireball was a deck save, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, he has fire bolt. Uh, he c keep in mind he's a dimensional. Oh, he's an yeah. elder's knight, so he doesn't oh, have fire bolt yet. Ball. Wait. Oh, I thought you said fire ball. So I thought there was gonna be a fucking explosion. Bolt. Ugh. It's still probably gonna make noises when it gets hit. If it hits. That so. too. It seems to be confounded by sound. It seems to be mostly sound based. So this was a good play all, I, yeah. uh, either way. And it can't hear where we are and where it came from. And it can't uh, get any sound out to signal any of its buddies. And its buddies can't hear him if it cries. So I like it. It's still a good, good plan. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I think I have the curse now. I'm sorry. I just rolled a one. Yeah, I, I probably gave it to you, dude. I've got like the low roll cooties. Next is gonna be Ryan one. See how my other dice do my dice do. All right, okay. is anybody doing anything else? Mm. Before mm. I have the Hydra do its thing. Did the Hydra respond it, to it getting fire, like a firebolt landing, I assume, near it? <laughs> uh, it does not. Do I have a chance to cast fairy fire on it before we go? Go ahead. Yeah, so that's a dex 18. So I'm going to be communicating with the team. This thing seems to be reacting entirely based on sound. It did not react to the fire hitting near it. Mm -hmm. I say we jump it before it leaves the bubble. Or use Poppy to try to keep it contained in the bubble. What? Did Poppy, make... my pet. Oh, yeah, you, have a, you have a pet? A what did I miss? Um, yeah, I have an artillery. Uh, oh, artillery oh, like one or two levels an artificer, so he has. Yeah, I remember that. I didn't, I didn't realize pit. you named it Poppy. So did it make the deck save? I'm just there stroking Poppy. It's okay. He 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 doesn't know better. Okay, no, it does not make the deck save, but it sort of glows brightly at this point. Okay, good. So everybody gets advantage. On and again, it basically seems to be completely oblivious to what's going on. Is this sort of like? Uh, in a few moments, essentially, you see it sort of wink out of existence and then pop into existence, maybe about 15 feet away, basically outside of the zone of silence. So the light, mm -hmm. the, the light went out, which meant it went out of this realm of existence and then popped back in, because otherwise it would continue to blow even if it went uh, invisible, right? Okay. Can I try to contact the Raven Queen as an um, Eldritch Knight? Since I'm gonna no. lodge, since I'm gonna lodge an elf. Well, I'm saying essentially, we keep in mind essentially we're space people for all intents and purposes. So it's like this. <laughs> but the Raven Queen is my god, my goddess. Well, that's still possible, essentially. So she's somewhere. But in the uh, world. you haven't ever called upon her or any made any claim to her or prayer to her in the past. So we'll. We'll say that this one falls on deaf ears for now until you do something for the Raven Queen. <laughs> Aww. But I'm a loyal right, soldier. So, uh, okay, so weird Hydra creature basically whips out, blips out of existence, reappears a little further away, and continues to meander uh, along its merry way as it's uh, 
as this weird tripod legs uh, sort of sh shuffle it forward, and then maybe every uh, maybe then another few seconds, essentially it pops out of existence and pops into existence uh, somewhere else. So it really didn't notice anything we did, did it? It, oh, it, did it, it, it got put in the cone it of silence for a minute. Went on it, its like, very freaked way. out. Yeah. Um. Interesting. Oh. Interesting. So it is based entirely on sound. So, um, uh, what do you call it? Silence is stuck Golden. in the place that I put it. So, mm, I'm going to cancel that. We then, still have silent because, passage up, right? Yeah, we do, this, we do still have pass without a trace. Okay. Yes. Let's go try and get to our contact. I have a feeling this could be bad. Yeah. Is he like... Is this Hydra, like, making a beeline for our guy, or is he just sort of meandering in the same direction? You see the, uh, the see, you see the creature alert to something, uh, and then, uh, you hear some, like, some creak in, uh, some container somewhere, uh, as the Hydra sort of blips out of existence, and then you hear a horrible, horrible scream, uh, and then some, uh, some sort of wet, chompy noises, and then uh, you see this half torn apart torso basically get flopped on top of a cargo container, and then the uh, the hydro creature basically like wrenches open the lock on the cargo container and tosses the half eaten body in there. <laughs> this almost reminds me of the, th the creature from A Quiet Place. And then you see it basically sort of like. As if it's sniffing the air with its uh, basically sightless, uh, sightless snouts, and uh, and then it starts heading, continue to heading towards the far wall. So um, I'm gonna fly. Uh, actually, let me make because you probably know. Maybe make a stealth check for this. Um, fly silently over to this corpse and try and identify it as. Uh, if it was our contact or not. So, right, it's not your contact. It's some sort of regular dock worker. Uh, he's not okay. dressed in acolyte robes or anything like a priest. Okay. Uh, and he definitely doesn't have the same facial structure, even though it's like... Yeah. So, even though part of his face is missing, you definitely could easily recognize that, your contact. Uh, yeah, follow-up question. is Was the Hydra creature attempting to hide this corpse at all, or was it just sort of just like, take a bite kill it, move on. No, it actually hid the corpse. <laughs> okay, so these things are at least intelligent enough to do that, so okay, there isn't... They seem to be, uh, what's their, like, working on their own. They aren't being masterminded by something. Well, I wouldn't say, necessarily say that. They're coordinated well, no, in mean, some like... way because they're, they're coordinated in some way because you can see them basically going through a particular... Your locate object is telling you they're moving out in a particularly methodical search pattern, basically to clear the whole dock at this point. Yeah, they're like they're they're doing a sweep. So they are controlled, but they're um, it's more like giving orders to troops rather than being puppeted. Interesting. I would okay. say we they need would to be find our contact now. Um, okay, so do you rush ahead uh, ahead of this thing to basically see get following your uh, locator? Follow-up question, though. Uh, if I cast silence on, like, an object of mine or something, it, the silence bubble travels with us, right? Yes, that's right. All right, I'm going to recast silence on, like, a piece of clothing I'm wearing and then motion us to keep moving. Like, follow the, okay. follow the hollow projector locator. And I'm okay. going gonna, gonna to just periodically cast Prestidigitation to make us smell like an ocean breeze. Okay. Because it enough. seems to be smelling. All right, so you put. Uh, uh, all right, as a tree for breezes, the party. So. <laughs> 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 all right, uh, you follow the hollow locator uh, through the maze of cargo containers. Eventually, you pop out uh, at a door, just like just on the edge of all the cargo containers against the seawall. There's a simple orange and red uh, steel door here uh, with a little bit of uh, steel 
with a little bit of a uh, stairwell basically leading up to you, maybe about two, uh, two, three steps, essentially, uh, of, uh, of sort of like steel girdle. You uh, step up to the door. There doesn't seem to be any controls on this side. You sort of just bang on the door twice and then realize you're standing in a silence field and, and shoo, uh, shoo uh, Sean, no, tear yeah, Sean away. I, I back up, I back up <laughs> 10 feet. Because it's a 20 foot and, uh, diameter dome. You bang on the door twice, and it's like the door opens, your contacts on the other side. It's like. Uh, I don't know what exactly is going on with security at this point, uh, but I would have. But uh, there is something bad going out on the docks at this point. I have your shipment, but uh, it's up to you to get it out of here. <laughs> Yeah, let's go, go ahead and give it to us, and I suggest you get to safety, because indeed there are bad things going on out here. If you'd like to come with us, you're welcome. No, I have a... Uh, I must keep my vigil here, essentially. I don't plan to give up my position. Uh, like, there'll be other times, essentially, to smuggle uh, light water out in other periods and to get okay. paid, so... We mean yeah. here as in this this location, because the dock is... No, I'm heading hydrogen. back into the temple, essentially. If you have a way of disguising yourself, perhaps you can get out that way, but like I said, it's like, I leave it up to your expert choice on how to get the shipment out of here. Okay, but you're going to give it to us? Yes, it's right here. So he shows, he sort of uh, points to a a hover sled sort of levitating maybe about two or three inches off the ground uh, with this large, uh, like, four by five by five crate uh, sitting on top of it. So... That's it. Uh, I don't suggest opening it up, essentially. you lose some of the... <laughs> pretty tightly packed, so you might... Uh, if you're not careful, you might lose some of the vials. So, you're only going to get fully paid if you get this full shipment out of here. So. Is there any way we could move this into one of the storage crates Hanham gave us? Or is it meant to be... like? Can it not be taken off of this repulsor sled? You can take it off the repulsor sled. You can repackage it however you want, essentially. I just... Noting that the vials themselves are pretty fragile, so be oh. careful. <laughs> but the, but the whole thing wouldn't fit in any of our storage containers, so we'd have to repack it to do that. Should I uh, try to use that? I'm sorry, yeah, I'm saying it's loader? it's four feet by four four feet by five by mm-hmm. five feet. So yes, it'll fit in a cargo container just fine. I'm saying you can repackage it however you want. Essentially, there's there's other crates and packages and storage boxes all over the docks. Uh, he's just saying. Take care in repackaging it because the vials inside are like really fragile. Well, I was Question. asking about our interdimensional storage because I don't really think we can escape through the middle of the temple while we're towing this thing behind. We're going to have to have some way to have it incognito. That's the other thing. Essentially, you're not going to be able to put this thing into interdimensional storage. Basically, light water has uh, an adverse reaction with interdimensional oh, well, spaces. Okay. Then I don't see any way to disguise this and head through the um, the uh, temple. I think we're going to need to get back out on the dock side. Just anyway. not like it's labeled. This is like so long as you don't tell people there's light. This is your context. So long as you don't tell people there's light water in this, and they probably won't say anything. That's so true, especially if there's a panic from the docks being like eaten. Which way do you guys want to go? I was going to ask. Does do we know if the um, the hover sled like hovers over water? Yeah, I could hover over water. It's really not meant for that. It's probably you'll burn out the you'll probably burn out the repulsors. It's really meant for levitating over solid ground. So, mm-hmm. so we have to either walk this thing out. No, we have to walk this thing out. Or you could so, get it back into a cargo container and get it shipped back. Basically, yeah, Smitty basically has already arranged for your your return trip. Or you could so, fly it back out on your hover bike. Yeah. So there's yeah. lots of different choices here. So. You also have uh, you also have bought a secondary like Plan B contact to smuggle it through the sea if that's uh, that's necessary as well. So you have lots of choices. We do, but given that these hydras are here, I'm not sure if the ocean is a safe escape plan. Okay, fair enough. All right, I need to stop by the restroom. I'll be back. Okay. Oh, good. So yeah, my question now is: Do we stealth out or do we fight our way out? I think, knowing Lawrence, we're definitely going to need to fight at some point. I think the question is whether we go looking for it or whether we bump into it around the corner. So 
So am I hearing that you guys want to go through the temple or that you want to try and get back out through the containers and avoid these guys? Container seems like the best bet. If we can... um Get back to our hover bikes? And then if it goes well, bad, yeah, like, we can um, call our, um, a guy to come in and extract us? I want yeah, to make a worthy... Get back to the container of our hover bikes and... Um, just load it in there. We can just get out, off on our container and like get shipped back to wherever the container was going to go, right? Well, I don't know that anybody's there to ship it back because those creatures ate everything. Mm -hmm. So we might I have want to, to do the sacrifice. So there won't be any like normal shipping when they come to find out what happened to all the people that got eaten. They're going to be like trying to canvas the area before they ship anything back. So I don't think we can hide in the container. But we could get out <clears> of <throat> rubber bikes and, and escape that way at that point. Or we can contact for extraction. Or we can try and steal one of the boats. I want to try to see if I can sacrifice one of these to the Raven Queen. For the Raven Queen. What do you think? One of these what? creatures? One of the high, yeah, one of the creatures. I'll be honest, Lawrence didn't sound super excited about the Raven Queen, and I like Lawrence to be happy. <laughs> I mean, you can try, but... <laughs> well, even in the future, there's there are gods and, uh, queen, and goddesses. I guess if you hit the striking blow on one of these, by all means, we might as well start buttering her up, right? Yeah. Maybe she'll give us something in the future. Yep. Do you guys think, you, uh, you being Tree and Asgul, do you guys think you could hack the crane system to load us back onto a boat? Or... That That's seemed, what I was planning. Okay, when, when we did that out on the deck, it seemed to be an incredibly complex system and very, very mm -hmm. easy to, like, crash into a bunch of stuff that you didn't mean to mm -hmm. crash into. Mm -hmm. So I think that we should probably just flat out steal a boat or do the hover bikes and not necessarily go back right to, you know, where we left. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, that or, makes sense. Or come back and say, ah, everybody's dead! Right? And then the ensuing panic then melt away. Mm -hmm. that, that would be the way to We either have to create our own chaos that we can control, mm -hmm. or we have to not get into any chaos at all. That's probably a good rule of thumb for a lot of people. Yeah, I say we try to avoid. Well, I like chaos, so I don't know. Oh, chaos <laughs> is going to get to us because somebody's going to. I'm probably going to be the person that rolls it, you know? <laughs> you know what doesn't like chaos? This vial of this box of very uh, fragile vials. You know what? I'm gonna get up for a minute while Lawrence is in. I'll be right back. Well, one of the scrapers went by. I've got about six inches of snow out there right now. Ugh. Nice. How dare you say that word in front of me? <laughs> What's wrong with snow? I've had eight years of too much snow. If I never see snow again, it'll be too soon. I had fifteen years of snow and I still love it. Alright. I love not driving. Okay, what do you guys decide? Oh. I think the best option is um does the does the repulsor sled make any noise? I assume it makes a noise. But we've got silence. Yes, it makes right? the it makes that low whir 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 noise. <laughs> I have one second level spell slot left. We could hypothetically speaking try and stealth our way back to our storage container with the uh, hover bikes with the sled in tow, mm -hmm. and try and load our bikes onto a boat and get away with a boat stealthily, because we have, I think we have all the tools needed to get get through this without, like, needing to engage these hydras, right. and then the temple can just deal with them themselves, they're not our problem, or alternatively, we quote-unquote go loud, use the hydras as a distraction, and go out on foot. Yeah, Hydra. Uh, wrong religion. 
<laughs> oh, yep, you're right. Sorry. I think that we'd rather go out by the docks because I think we've got a plan B if we go out to the docks because it'll be mm -hmm. easier for those people to extract us. Plus, we can either get out on the hover bikes or we can try and steal a boat or we can try and steal some other kind of transportation around here. But if we Make try sense. and go into the temples, some of these... Some of these clerics are extremely high level, and there's no telling what trouble we might get into. So I think we've got more options if we stay out on the docks, and it's we know what the hydra is at least that it's it, you know what it looks like. We don't really understand what's going on inside if we get into security issues. I agree with that logic. Spock would be proud. <laughs> Live long and prosper. Okay, you're uh, all right. You're sneaking the crate back out into the docks. Uh, the uh, you open the yellow and orange uh, steel door uh, and sort of peek your heads out, Scooby Doo style, and look to the right and the left. The uh, you can see one of these uh, faceless Hydra things uh, sort of shambling around the edges at this point. Just like it's only maybe about fifty feet away. But uh, you are hovering maybe about four, uh, 40 feet, uh, maybe about 40 to 50, 40 to 60 feet above it, essentially, when you were futzing with it earlier and it didn't detect you. So you're guessing its detection range must be relatively small uh, or it must have be really good at detecting vibrations on the ground. Uh, so, But with silence, there are but, no vibrations. Yeah, it is relatively right? close to your position at the moment. Can we um, can we zap something over on the other side to draw its attention so we can sneak by it? Throw a rock oh. or some shit. <clears throat> you have little mechanical toys that you can certainly do that with. So, knock yourself out. Do I have? Do I know where its weak points are? You have no idea. Basically, this looks like no creature you've ever seen before. Darn. Okay. I wanted to sacrifice it to the Raven Queen. Then, uh, then, <laughs> then I can use my um, uh, my armor cannon thing to shoot something that is on the other side of it to draw it away from the path that we have to go through. I'm saying you have you you've created basically tinker toys, basically oh. small mechanical automatons oh, before. Okay. Essentially. Yeah, maybe we send a couple of those out. So I'll take two of those and send them out in a V. Uh, Poppy, it's okay. your turn to go. Uh, no, don't, let's not kill him if we can do my little guys. And let's make him like buzzing noises, right? So I'm going to send him two of them in a V to try and draw him away from us. Okay, you send them off in... You send them off in two different uh, directions. You have like Adam Savage drop one in like oh. maybe, a, maybe about uh, 40, 50 feet away. And then you set off one essentially and... And hopefully it'll get confused. Uh, and then you got you guys fly off in a different direction. Okay, so I need... Uh, let's see here. I guess that's stealth for everybody at advantage. Uh, uh, DC pardon 15. me. Um, I wanted to cast silence on the... Um, the what's called? The repulsor sled. Okay, you cast is, silence on the repulsor sled. Isn't it included in the silence that you're in anyway? Like, that, well, the silence that I had before... Uh -huh. I, I, wait, hang on. That is a good question. I um, how long? Silence lasts ten minutes. Has it been ten minutes since we like, since I put silence on myself and we moved into this crate? You're maybe about at the edge of ten minutes at this point. You probably only got about a minute left on it. Okay, good call then. Put it on the sled. Yeah. Uh, in any case, if we can sit here for ten minutes stealthily, I can ritual cast it and save myself a spell slot. That's ten minutes these creatures can find us. Yeah, I don't think that we That's have why I'm minutes. asking. Yeah, but, all right. So. Yeah, you're looking at it right now from a practical standpoint. You're going, that's not going to happen. The creatures are actively searching the docks. If you're anywhere out on the docks, they will eventually find you if you sit still for ten minutes. <laughs> do you need, yeah, got do it. you need to like do a quick heal on yourself or drink a potion or something? I already healed myself earlier. I should okay, be good. okay. Good. I have just that I have one second level left. So I'd... No, all right, I, I will use my last second level. And um, cast silence one last time on the repulsor sled, so we all stick close to it. Great. Okay, so you're uh, you set off your two uh, your two gizmos, and they uh, 
They make buzzing and whirring noises, and the hybrid is like zooms over to it immediately. And you're glad you did this because like three or four hydras basically converge on that thing, and basically they glom together and become one big creature, and then they split apart again. You're going, hmm. I have no idea what the fuck these things are, and I don't want to find out. <laughs> I don't want. Uh. I wish for so myself. As you, uh, hmm. Okay, so I need uh Okay, we're gonna use. Some combination of survival and investigation to f figure where your uh, best path all the way back to uh, your your cargo container at this point. So everybody roll. Okay, I got a Stop. twenty-four for investigation. Okay. And I have three more of those little creatures or little tinker guys. So if it looks like they're starting to, you know, come in your direction oh again. I would like Don't to me. send Adam with another one to drop off and um, and send him in another direction. Okay, roll a d20 for Adam. Higher is better. Um, I got a 17 for my um, stealth, which is actually uh, the lower of the two rolls. Okay. Cause I need, Wait, uh, are we doing both stealth? Like, we need, you need a stealth roll and something else, too? And, uh, I need investigation or survival. We're going to assume stealth works for right now. Okay, Adam I got, got a 12. I got an 11 for survival. Oh. Adam got a 12 for his, like, um, dropping off the thing. Distraction All right. check. I got 23 for the survival. Yeah, very good. All right. So, uh, so from a pathfinding standpoint, you don't you don't get lost in the maze of cargo containers. Uh, your investigation, you eventually is not as su not as super great as you uh, as you're trying to basically path your way around these guys and basically plot a path around the hydras. They they seem to be have re aggregated in the sort of like center of the roughly in a glob in the center of the. Uh, of the dock at this point, as if they're guarding something, and uh, <laughs> but unfortunately, they put some right in your path. <laughs> so now I want to know what they're guarding. Oh no! My curiosity's about to kill me. They're guarding a squirrel. Squirrel? What? Where? What? Where? Squirrel versus squirrel. <laughs> it's a very okay, but uh, squirrel. they are. Uh, okay. Annoyingly enough, essentially, there's enough of them to where they're blocking every viable path, essentially, to get back to your uh, cargo container. Uh, unless you're willing to just fly, unless you're willing to just fly literally above the level of the cargo containers completely and not really have any stealth. <laughs> I mean, sight is an. That might be okay because it. maybe that's the only people that are looking are the only things looking for you, but it's like. You have a feeling there's probably security cameras around here somewhere. But you know what? They're going to be trying to figure out what's going on with these hydro things. And if, you know, if there's a chance we're going to get blamed for every single thing that happened today anyway. So, you make a point. Yeah. So, um, Our yeah. priority right now is just get out. I think if we can go up, if they're mostly going on, um, on sound and um, smells... And if we go up high, they're not going to be looking for anything up there. You've got silence on the sled. Let's let's give that a try. All right. So uh, you zoom uh, across the, the top. Essentially, you hear this uh, like very familiar uh, commissar's voice. This commissar Dominic of the Inquisitors is like, "You intruders! I see you there. Essentially, surrender immediately to the to to the Imperial Inquisition." As you no, hear them you boomed don't. out over loudspeakers. <laughs> For what? I'd, oh, yeah, rather, back. I'd rather deal with the hell commissar than the hydra people, so. Yeah. I, I tell him, you gotta come to us. Right. You make a rude gesture, uh, uh, just like off into the air, because you can't. I mood him. Sick. You're assuming essentially there's some sort of security cameras in the ceiling yeah. or something that has picked you up. Uh, the, uh... Oh, I see how it is, essentially. It's like... Inquisitors! Arrest them! As you can see, uh, like, various Inquisitors on jetpacks going... Zooming out from the edges of the, uh... Uh, up from the ceiling, down from the ceiling, down towards you guys. This place is indoors? I thought we were outside. 
say from the crane uh, gantries, let's put it that way. Yeah, that makes so sense. So okay. they've totally not cared about the hydras eating every single person on the dock, but they're upset about us with the hub. Okay. <laughs> Is that right? Does, does Tree have it right? That's a good question. So, uh, the... You don't exactly know when the Commissar and his troops just ar arrived. So they may have... They may have arrived in between, essentially, the period of time, essentially, uh... When the, uh... The Dimensional Shamblers were over at the edge, mm -hmm. so... Okay, so uh, there's roughly about a dozen Inquisitors, basically, uh, dressed in red, uh, fiery red robes, uh, with the Imperial uh, the imperial Trifoil over their uh, front breastplate of their armor, uh, wielding flamers, going, <laughs> zooming down, and plasma guns zooming down towards you people. <laughs> so they're being really noisy, and we're still being really quiet. And there's zoom. Is there any way to like lure them to where they're gonna bump into Hydra guys without us getting in the middle of it? Uh, that uh, that in fact happens without you actually doing anything. As they as they get sort of get down to the sort of level of the top of the containers mm -hmm. where you guys are, uh, you see all these uh, basically globular, multi-headed uh, eyeless Hydra things like bloop into existence and begin to tear these individuals apart. <laughs> I find this strangely Did I start accusing get the hell out of here? Uh, we already had that, yeah. All right, do you take this moment, basically, to jet to your hover bikes at this point? Yep. Yes. Oh, jet to your container. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> all right, you all remain within your silence and zoom along. There, uh, the various Inquisitors take pot shots at you. <laughs> I'm surprised they're not trying to kill the Hydra instead of... Instead of well, some of them are trying to kill the Hydras, and some of them are basically still singularly focused on getting uh, getting you guys. Uh, okay, so two of them hit. Uh, let's see here. So uh, that will be Ronan. Uh, 16 points of fire damage, and uh, and then uh, Tree, uh, 16 points of fire damage. As uh, white hat bolts of plasma smack into both of you. I think. Do Oi. I have? Um... No, I don't. I was like, don't I have uh, absorb elements? But no, actually, I don't. Never mind. That's probably because well, I'm, I'm saying them, you've huh? been using absorb elements this whole time, so I'd assume you still have it, unless you okay. replace it with something else. I don't. Know. Oh, oh, it's a reaction instead of a bonus action. Okay, so I can cut that in half, right? And so you I, can cast that. And then I have one You can D6 cut that in half minus, using absorb element. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then it's down to eight, and I get 1d6 to add onto my next um, attack, attack, right? Yeah. All right, so uh, you guys are making, uh, are zooming along, essentially, at best speed, all the way over to uh, your cargo container. Uh, there's... Uh, there's a pitched battle going on outside uh, your container at this point. The uh, three uh, three inquisitors essentially have uh, like intercepted you as you as you sort of land on your container, and they land and they land at the other side of the container, and you're basically both looking at each other. Hey, how's it going, guys? And uh, you're pointing. All of you are pointing behind the Inquisitors at this point because you can't speak at the moment because you're in the science field. <laughs> pointing at the uh, at the faceless Hydras that are basically booping into existence behind them, and you're ah, going, "Save us! Save us! Because ah, we're still dressed." Well, it's more along happening. the lines of basically, you guys should turn around before you die. <laughs> you guys should turn around. Oh, and they're going, they're looking at you, going, "What? What?" <laughs> Does anybody actually try to indicate to them that they, these guys should save themselves, or do you just yeah. let them get... I, will. I, think, I think I'm gonna say, hey, they're asking for support! They're asking for help! Go help your friends! <laughs> well, I'm saying you're all in a silence field at the moment, oh, so you're gonna right. have to do some weird, okay. weird kabuki finger in order to get like, this across. I'm so. gonna be, like, signaling that they need to go uh, help their friends, yeah. Okay, uh, make a... Make we'll a save performance check. first. Oh, God. <laughs> and that 
is a ten. They don't totally don't get it, essentially. <laughs> as this, uh, this, uh, this combined glob of basically two Hydra things, like, tears into the three of them, basically, and you see limbs flying all over the place, and you're like, bad! <laughs> so, the 17 I got wouldn't have mattered? Uh, say one of them gets away. <laughs> the, I needed bread, generally, both of you to succeed for them to, uh, Oh, one of them uh, jumps up into the air at the last moment as he realizes, oh shit, there's something behind us, as he flies away uh, as his two buddies basically get torn in half. <laughs> okay, so now oh, you're, the front of your cargo container is like a ugly, faceless Hydra thing is parked in front of it. Oh, okay, so do we see any boats that we can steal? It doesn't make any, uh, it annoyingly enough, uh, or disturbingly enough, does not make any sounds. It just makes it sort of like chawing noises and like slurpy, gloopy noises as it moves. But it, its jaws open and like, uh, and you'd, you'd figure it would roar, but no sound comes out. <laughs> Is it looking? It still has no eyes, right? Oh. Is it looking? It still looking has no eyes. eyes. Do we have... Can I shoot my gun like and try and distract it away? I'm going to pull out my pistol and shoot. Yeah, the... I want to see if it reacts towards us or if it but if we're basically blind to it. Lawrence, do we, can we see any boats that we could steal or do we absolutely need to get into our hoverbikes? Uh, you're looking at this point uh, out on the docks. There's... There's a, like a tiny dinghy out there, essentially, but uh, mm -hmm. so maybe that might work. But uh, you you're going to have to battle your way through some of these guys in order to get to it at the moment. Do I have time to hit this one with Thunder Wave and see if I can push it out of the front? Because that Thunder pushes... Wave wouldn't work because it's immune to thunder damage while it's in the Silence Bubble. Oh, I... Well, I'm saying the Silence Bubble is really only covering you guys at this point, so you're in. You're in one of these, like, 30-foot... You're standing on one end of a 30-foot, uh, like, cargo container, like... And it's and it's at the other end, basically, blocking up the entrance at the moment. My right, question uh, is, you, does it, quote-unquote, see, or I guess, hear us? Does it know we're here? As far as you can tell, it can be... It, it, you are within its detection range at this point, as it seems to be, like... It's finished off its two, uh, like, appetizer inquisitors, and it's moving towards you guys. So okay, I need a new... Uh, okay. YOLO. Yeah, that works. Do I... So do I have time to cast Thunder Wave on it before we get into a net, or... Ten. Okay, so I need a... I need a, uh, I need a D20 check, essentially, to make sure you don't mess this up by basically end up being in... Ending it up being within silence when you try to cast it. I fire oh, fireball. Oh, you need a D20 for me. Okay. Yes. All right. You can't cast verbal spells while in my bubble of silence. I know what I'm saying is, is like it's very easy to accidentally <laughs> step back into it or have uh, have Tearshot step forward slightly too far and like cancel your spell. Well, that was a four, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's that didn't go so well. That's effectively what happens, essentially. Like, Tearshawn, like, like floats, like, three feet forward while you're... Once you just step just outside of the spell and ends up canceling your spell. Okay. Okay, I got so... got a natural the, uh, 20. What were you so, rolling? it has an... Uh, so, to you go forward if you roll more than 15. I was rolling to see, like, a fire or fireball. I got a natural 20. Yes, go right ahead. Yeah, I roll for a natural 20 for that. Okay, uh, and I will roll for the random chance of getting cancelled due to silence. Okay. Your spell likewise basically gets, like, nudged as your as, uh, Tirshan, uh, unconsciously floats three feet forward and basically envelops you in silence again. <laughs> I look, I turn around and say, Tirshan, really? I don't hear you because... Silence. Yeah! <laughs> You're gonna need to use American Sign Language. I'll make a slightly rude gesture. Okay, so uh, everybody, initiative. I got a ten. Okay, 
You need 15 or better to basically go before the uh, the high deck. I got an 18. Okay. Unnatural 20. I got a 10. Alright, so uh, Ronan and Mina, you're up first. Go. Um, I'm gonna I am going to... Um, I'll use a bo um, bonus action down a uh, health potion. Okay. So I can get some of my health back. Alright, well, the... Okay, so... Our potions cost an action unless you bought an auto-injector, essentially, so... Yeah, I have, I think, one more auto-injector left, so I just used it. Uh, no, I'm saying you actually have to buy an auto-injector, essentially. Otherwise, uh, you literally have a med kit that you have to apply using an action. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Uh, Okay, so if you're going to do the action anyways, spend your second win as well so you can heal up all your hit points. <laughs> and then use your movement to basically move out of the silence. <laughs> I move out of the silence and then... Do I still have a bonus action or no? You still have a bonus action, yes. I'm going to have Poppy attack. Okay, oh, never mind. I keep on forgetting second win is a bonus action. Oh. Okay, no, you don't have your bonus action. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> okay, uh, Mina. Okay, I'm gonna move out of the range of silence, and I'm gonna try Thunder Wave again. I'm gonna cast it as a level two spell. It needs to make a con eighteen. Okay, you uh, you underestimate how exactly how far this thing can reach as you get uh, as you get within range of your uh, Thunder Wave, and uh, several heads snap out and uh, try to bite you. And what is your AC? Do you, you have over 20, right? It's 20, yeah. Okay, never mind. And then it does hit. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh... Okay, one of the Hydra heads uh, chomps into your shoulder for 12 points, and I need a con save. That's a 17. Alright, so you take uh, 6 points of poison damage as well. Which is already halved. Okay. Alright, so... So did, uh, so did you it... You feel poison basically like burning into your... Uh, burning into your shoulder as you shove it off your shoulder. So, but did it make the concept? Right there, and then you got... Uh, your thunder wave goes off with a kabang. Uh -huh. And it, uh, it sort of like flops backwards as... Uh, And you can see about half of it basically like flops off the deck and then the other half basically stays. Okay. And then, so if it hits, then it had 3d8, so that's 11 plus 1d6 is 3, so that's 14 damage. And then yeah. um, the part that stayed, can I try and hit that with telekinetic shove? Sure. Um, that is... Um, a DC 17 strength. Okay, it remains. Okay, that's me. And and, and then I'm not um, in an attack of opportunity place, so I believe I'm going to like move back a little bit so I'm out of range of the heads. Dang, it has extreme reach, so you are within its attack range. Okay, well then I guess I'm going to stay there. All right, uh, the the uh, the dimensional shambler in front of you uh, shimmers, and the one on the ground shimmers, and they glom back together, boop, uh, like, and you see like twelve or eighteen heads sprout out of it as as uh, as Mina's going, ah, oh, this is bad. <laughs> and the soldiers are not doing anything, huh? The soldiers are fighting their own hydras at this point. <laughs> Uh, they're they're dying, is what they're doing. Yeah, they're being eaten. Exactly. One, two, three. All 
It's, uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four. Okay. Four heads in a crit essentially uh, latch onto Mina for a total of 58 points of damage. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. Well, and I don't have a lot to begin with, right? Okay. So that was a, I was All right, as cool. I am going to uh, pull out the insanity pistol and uh, dump two okay. insanity into it. All right, so you do, what is it? 76 damage. I rolled a hit. Oh. No, it's 8d6, actually. 11, 8, uh, 19? It's easily... Okay, so roll 8d6 plus your dex bonus. 2, 3, 4... Alright, 8d6? Yes. 4, 8... 12... 22... 27 plus my dex is... Where's my dex? Two, 29? Damage? You, uh... You cause the thing to, again, vibrate and then split into two again, essentially. Oh, and no. it sort of makes this wheezing sound that sounds like... <laughs> what does it say? It says the Chaos God Slanish's name. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you said Radish, and I thought that was a very odd thing, so thank you. Radishes! <laughs> Behold, radishes. Very chaotic Turnips moment. <laughs> radishes. Okay, uh, no, it, it, it says Slanish. Okay, oh. and, uh, and Asgore can hear whispered through his mind, essentially. It's like... Uh, this, the, the word Slanish basically echoes through his mind, essentially, and he... It gets it triggers all sorts of moments of these weird times uh, of uh, of pleasure uh, and pain that uh, he endured under uh, Zeech, as uh, as you can basically see this one basically big vein like pop out in Asgol's head. Uh, okay, you have two attacks, Asgol. So keep on going. What do you want to do with your second attack? I right, I am going to do just a normal attack with the pistol. Okay, roll to hit. Oh, eight. 18. 18 hits. Uh, 2d6 plus your dex. 3, 4, 6 damage. Like you, uh, you blast it again with the rainbow energies of the Insanity Blaster, uh, and uh, again it basically says, Slanish. Uh, and then can I move, like, I want to go vertically up in the air, like, 40 feet, if, if I can hang. You, uh, you, lie, you, you use your 3D maneuvering gear, basically launch grapples into the ceiling and zoom yourself up. Uh, okay, so... Tirshan. So, this thing has split into two things now? Yes. Uh, great, alright, I can still work with this, fuck it. Technically, it was always two things, it just can glom together to become one thing. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna cast Banish at 5th level, which gives me uh, two targets. Okay. So, uh, be gone, thought. Uh, Christmas save for both of them. All right. Uh, one of them remains, and the other one blips out of existence. DC 17. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, now we only got one left to deal with. Uh, I'm going to keep concentrating on this for a minute, and then I'll back up. By the way, the silence bubble is gone. Oh, we can't. Okay, yeah. silence. All right. I'd say we're kind because, of doing okay. that anyway, so. Yeah. Okay, Ronan, you're up. All right, you feel much better at this point now that you've healed yourself up some. Uh, Mina looks much worse as she just got oh, torn limb from Yeah, the and um, bonus action healing word at first level. On your feet! Thank okay. you. I like that. Okay, Mina, you, uh. You feel this Thank sort you. of Thank like. You're feeling around, you're going, it's like, I think I'm missing some internal organs. <laughs> see, see this, like, like disc-shaped chunk, basically, out of your left uh, left abdomen. 
<laughs> Why is it this happens every time? You'll be fine. You always are. Yeah, eventually. Um. So. Okay. Next. So you're uh, you're a disadvantage on uh, athletics or acrobatics check at this point, okay. as it just or uh, because it just freaking hurts to move at the moment. <laughs> okay. So that's your long term. Uh, Why does everything hurt? Uh, natural twenty on a strike. Um, okay. The nine live stealer. All right. Are you going to use a charge out of the six live stealer because there's only six charges left in it? Yes. All right. Okay. Well, it's still alive, but you do do a lot of necrotic damage to it because even if you don't kill it outright, essentially it uh, it still dumps a whole bunch of necrotic energy as it tries to suck the soul out of this thing. All right. So you uh, you stick the uh, the uh, the blade that sort of looks like uh like wet viscera basically black and wet viscera into the gray slimy uh thing with multiple tentacle heads uh and uh and it begins to basically you see like your strike point begin to necrose and as the wound sort of like sucks in on itself uh uh so roll what is it uh what is it 6d8 plus your strength bonus Uh, 21. Alright, it's, uh... It's beginning to... Its form seems to be, like, uh, vibrating as it... Uh, as if it's, uh, sort of, like, intermittently, uh, coming in and out of this dimension. Uh, Mina, uh, let's see your... Yeah. My second attack you is... You have two attacks, so make your second yeah, attack. My second that. attack is 21. Okay, you hit easily, so give me your, uh, d8... Uh, plus uh, your strength bonus. Plus two. Eight. Cause, uh, all ten. Right, so ten total. All right, so you stab it uh, a second time. Uh, the, uh, like, wet gooey ichor, uh, grayish white ichor basically spills out of it. Uh, Mina, you're up with, uh, like, six hit points. Okay. Six. <laughs> So, um, I'd like to try and hit it with Lightning Bolt. That's a dex 18 save. From the ground, you basically reach up and blast it straight into its bulbous body. It's, uh... Let's see here. That's a dex save, so it does not make that. Okay, so give me full damage. 8d6. Okay, so that's 31 damage. damage. Alright. Uh, okay. And then okay, it uh, it begins to uh, writhe and convulse as it uh, begins to disintegrate into uh, pieces, and then those pieces seem to like fade out of like this realm of reality as they become lighter and lighter and more transparent until they are no longer there. Let's get out of here, guys. Quick. Okay, there seems to be a pitched battle with the Inquisitors and uh, all around you. As let's see here. Anybody want to dump some? As Kirshan uh, is going, Kirshan is still concentrating, okay. but he could feel it's like this should be impossible. Nothing should be able to break out of banishment. And it's just like, uh, as the uh, as whatever it is essentially uh, shatters banishment and reappears right next to a lot of you who are standing next to the entrance of the cargo container. Another one? No, it is the same one, essentially, that got banished earlier, essentially, but uh, this is a type of cre extra-dimensional creature that can break banishment, so... How can we... Okay, uh, we're gonna do a quick surprise check for everybody. Everybody roll me a d20. If you roll 11 or better, you are not surprised. Otherwise, if you roll below that, you are surprised. Yeah, I'm definitely surprised by this, so that tracks. All right. That's impossible! <laughs> I got 11. Okay, so you're not oh, surprised. I'm in, a, I'm in oh. the wrong place. Hang on a second here. Asgol, you're not surprised. That's a 15. All right, the people that are surprised, essentially, you can take a moment to get the GTFO out of there so it can't get at you. So 
What do you want? To, or you can turn around and attack. So what are you doing? Um, um, I already see it rip apart one of your party members in one round if it gets a hold of you. So it's like this is yeah, it is not it is not great to be in melee range of this thing. I don't because, think that I can leave anybody back that didn't because not all of us made it, right? Yes. Okay. So well, all of you basically it basically appears just as you guys are about mm -hmm. to enter the cargo container. So you ripped open the cargo container doors at this point, and then it poofs into existence right behind you guys. Um, but I mean, if any of us weren't surprised and we're going to get left behind, then I think we need to fight the thing. So, um, Mina wants to hit this one with the light. You could the always, chest. like, grab, you could always try to grab Tearshawn, who is the surprised person in your party, and pull him away. Would, would so. five make him not surprised? I mean, yeah, would, would five do it? Because I can give him one of my fives. I got a six. Okay, yeah. Okay. Does Wait, no, five will work. Five will work, but this is not uh, this is not a traditional check. This is just like fifty fifty. Oh. So, gotcha. Well, do you guys want to fight, or do you want to try and grab him and, and beat feet? Let's get out of here. Okay. Who wants to I'm just saying you just take this round to get uh, get out of its melee range because it's apparently it doesn't have any range attack. So it's just like so long as you can get out of melee range, essentially it uh, it won't get that opportunity to maul somebody. <laughs> yeah, let's try and get out and let's grab Tishon and bring him with us. All right, so it does get attacks of opportunity, but that's way better than taking its eight attacks to the face. Yeah, <laughs> I think I figured that one out for us. Uh... Oof. Okay, let's try and get out of here. Oh, All right, uh, let's see here. Mina, <laughs> I guess Mina's the only one that is missed. Uh, all right, so everybody takes... Uh, even, with my even with my 23 armor? I rolled a 20, so it's like... I got fifth. Uh, so the totals are what is it? So plus eight. So twenty three, twenty one, twenty eight, and sixteen. <laughs> so all right. So uh, and by the way, all right. I threw uh, so potion. everybody. So okay. Ronan, you take. Uh, okay, so Ronan, you uh, you take eighteen points of damage. Uh, Asgol and Tirshan, you don't take ten, and Tree gets missed on as you. Like all dive in different directions, essentially. Uh, Ronin having to having happened to grab Tearshawn on the way out as he's sort of standing there, going, "What?" <laughs> okay, so you've all dived off to the side at this point uh, and are floating in midair because most of you can fly. Uh, the or dangling from the ceiling like Asgore at the moment. So. Uh, you got you take a moment to basically recompose yourself as the uh, as the eyeless Hydra basically uh, begin continues to basically flicker in and out of existence uh, as it uh, gets ready to pounce again upon you people. Uh, so Azgul, what are you doing? Uh, can I? I'm gonna ready the uh, marine pistol that I got. And do I see it to shoot? Yeah, you can definitely see it. So I am gonna shoot at it twice. Okay, hold uh, it. Let's see, natural one and a two. So with this mine pistol, I just rolled a one and a two, and something happens with that. Are you? Do you have a plasma pistol, or what? What pistol do you got again? I'm sorry. Oh, it's the marine pistol when we fought um at the Cersei station or Hilo station um off of the. Oh, uh, this is a uh, so. If it's one of the marine plasma pistols, yes, on a, on a one or a two, it jams and uh, blows up in your hand, essentially. So it is b pistols broken, you take ten points of fire damage. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Sean. Dear Sean. Uh, I'm out of its range, right? Yes, you've been pulled out of range, but only just barely. It's like five feet in any direction, and it will be on somebody again. Where's the uh, repulsor sled? The repulsor sled is basically still sitting where you guys were. It's uh, just at the mouth of the entrance to your cargo container. Okay. Can I hit it? Do I have time to hit it with hypnotic pattern? 
Once it gets your turn, yes. Okay. Oh, because we okay. ran on a surprise. Okay, never mind. Yes, yeah, so you're, it uh, it popped into existence just behind you guys, and you all dive to the side okay. uh, to get away from it. I'm going to cast Command on it. All right, what are you commanding it to do? Flee. All right, very good. Uh, DC 17 Wisdom save. Yeah, hey, I rolled a 20, so it's not moving anywhere. It's got to so flee! If it could speak, it'd be saying no. <laughs> but it doesn't. So like, flee, <laughs> screw you. All right, uh, Ronan, what do you got? So, Pop okay, gives... uh, Tershad, you give uh, you back up more to give uh, give yourself some more space, or do you stay almost oh, within? I'm, range. Up. I'm flying up like another twenty feet backwards. Okay, okay, as goal, I'm assuming you're pulling away as well. Uh, Ronan, what are you doing? Uh, so, Poppy gives everyone a plus ten, by the way, oh, from thank ten you. points. Okay, so uh, the a basically force bubble, but. Dips into existence around everybody. Uh, okay, so what do you else are you doing? Is that your action or are you? Does that's, that's it, that's bonus, that's a bonus. So Poppy's bonus action. Okay. Um, I am going to charge at it. Okay. Yelling for the Raven Queen. Okay. Um, right. Surprisingly enough, that gave me a natural twenty. All right. Do you watch to use? Uh, yes. One of the five charges left. Okay, so I got four charges left. And uh, basically, all the uh, the whole fleshy mass basically puckers in, and then puckers in some more. Basically, as it gets sucked into your blade, <laughs> the only things that are left are basically some steel titanium, some lovely titanium teeth and fangs that basically clatter to the ground. About a, a dozen of them <laughs> clatter to the ground like rain all around you. Uh, clatter to the top of the cargo container. Uh, everybody. Uh, Breathes a sigh of relief and uh, starts loading into uh, loading up onto their uh, what, yeah, hover bikes. Uh, well done, Ronan. Okay, I need a I need a wisdom save for uh, me not this point. Oh, me not. Uh, why do we always do wisdom saves? Okay. I'll give you one of my inspiration since I still have like, I think five or six. Okay, well that's a 10, so I can give myself 5 and that would be 15. 15 and... is your target, so if you want to use one of your yeah, 5, do that. five bonuses, you can certainly okay. do that. Okay, so you're fine, essentially. Uh, your near-death experience basically does not traumatize you. <laughs> Yay! Even though you're still going, ah, oh, that's just like... This one time! This yeah. is not how I wanted to, as Mina's going, this is not how I wanted to get slimmer. <laughs> I hate when this still happens! Carrying, you're still carrying around a little weight from the time, essentially... <laughs> You had the insanity of just, like, eating anything in your pack. <laughs> By any chance, do I get any favor with the Raven Queen? Uh, roll, uh, roll a d100 for me. Uh, 60? A passage comes to your a passage sort of comes to your mind. It's just like the the raven sits at the raven sits in judgments of uh, the, the uh, fallen men and women uh, and guides them to their destined path and death. Uh, but you uh, you quickly realize this passage also. You don't know why this comes to your mind, but then you sort of quickly realize. Uh, the the Raven Queen basically uh, concerns herself with the uh, the death of mortals, not the death of immortal beings like demons. <laughs> Even if it was in her name, I killed it. Even I, um... if it was in her name, essentially, she only cares about the the comings and goings, basically, of the lives of mortals, not immortal beings. Okay. Uh, so that is the that's the sort of the insight you get, basically, from that role. Uh, okay, so you load up, you uh, put the light water on the uh, put the light water on the, the on your hover bikes, and you rev them up and zoom on out into the sea, uh, creating uh, giant rooster tails of water behind you as you go. Uh, you can see uh, 
in hot pursuit of you uh, is uh, Commissar Dominic and uh, and <laughs> what's left of his Inquisitors. There's only about three or four of them left. Uh, the uh, and you see these basically uh, like uh, Cthuloid uh, Hydras basically pop into existence like and then plopping to the sea behind them as they're sli slightly too far for them to teleport. <laughs> Right. But uh, Dominic and his team are right on your heels, so I need, uh, let's see, what are we going to use for piloting? Uh, suggestions? What are what are we going to use for piloting? Athletics? Like dexterity. No, let's not use something that I have disadvantage at right now. <laughs> <laughs> Can I use Arcana for my piloting? <laughs> alright, so, uh, alright, so, alright, so, Athletics or acrobatics? Let's uh, either one of those is fine. But yes, you are at disadvantage currently, Mina. Okay. I'm just gonna turn around and try and kill the um the, the captain. That's a nine, so I can make that a fourteen. Does that help? Uh, you are barely keeping ahead of them at this point, so I need teams uh, effectively. So, uh, all right. Uh, cool. Everybody make your rolls for your piloting check at this point to see if you can uh, juice your hover bikes and get uh, some extra distance. Uh, the only one of you basically that I think that they bought a superior hover bike was Ronin. Yes. So Ronin's hot, uh, really hot sports bike is really pulling ahead no. here. Easily. But the rest of you are just like, Ronin's looking behind and was like, well, shit. It's like, we need to invest in hover bike. Because there's like all of the rest of the team is like lagging behind. <laughs> Can I just like circle the um the Inquisitors just to help get a little bit more distance for the others? Well, you could basically drop back and basically harry the Inquisitors and try to get, delay them uh, to give your team more more space. That's one thing you can do. That's what. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. All right. So give me uh, three two hit checks and uh, three piloting checks. Ooh, a natural 20. Excellent. Um, 18, and an 11 to hit. Okay, no problem. Uh, so your two hits, you're pretty good. You uh, you fall back and, like, put fire bolts right into the intakes of two of their hover bikes, and they're, like, they sputter and begin to basically flame out and dive into the sea. Uh, Can I use then... the natural 20 on the commander and it's just stab him? <laughs> well, let's put it this way. You probably do not want to get super close to, uh, uh, let's see, Commissar Dominic may basically appear incompetent, but he is a very comba competent combatant, let's put it that way. So, Okay, so I'm going to fire him as far with the firebolt. Okay, so you use your 20 on Dominic's uh, extra heavy hover bike, and it's like, it clangs off of, like, armored plating, but uh, you do manage to uh, damage one of the repulsor... Uh, Repulsor elements and it's uh, his uh, hover sled. Uh, his hover bike is beginning to lag behind the others. Okay, and then I need uh, three your three piloting checks. Uh, you need DC fifteen or better. So I make two of them with a nineteen and eighteen. I fail the third, which is eleven. Okay. All right, there's uh, there's some return fire. Your hover bike is damaged. Uh, so you're. But that only makes it as fast as everybody else's hover bike, so you're no longer, like, screaming fast, you're, like, regular fast. <laughs> okay, so... And you zoom back up to your team. Uh, Alright, so there, uh, you've uh, been given a re reprieve at this point, essentially, uh, new, uh... Okay, new set, of new set of piloting checks for everybody. DC 15. And that's gonna be athletics? Athletics or acrobatics, whichever. Oh, so then I make that eleven then, because it's I rolled an eleven, but with athletics it's plus seven, so it's eighteen. Okay, so no, it's no problem. You uh, take no damage to your craft and do manage to uh, harry uh, Commissar Dominic's team enough to essentially where they're falling back a little bit. Okay, I, I got a, a thirteen this time. Okay. I rolled a fourteen, uh, so I'm gonna make that a nineteen. I got an eleven. Uh, 21. Okay. If you have inspiration, I suggest you use it in this case so you can get away at this point. <laughs> Alright. I will 
far right, I probably still have some inspirations left over from, um... The, I have a lot the of inspiration. Station. I have a lot of inspiration There we go, so. 23. Nat natural yeah. 20. Right. 23. Okay, uh, then Mina, let's see here. Are you going to use one of your plus five? Yeah, to so I have 19. Okay, no problem. All right, so you uh, you all uh, you all juice your bikes and uh, zoom out across the ocean, the uh, leaving the commissars team in the in your wake. The uh, uh, you're heading uh, at some point or another. Uh, the commissars team basically uh, after <laughs> especially with the commissars uh, hover bikes uh, suffering mechanical failure at this point, eventually has to peel off. Uh, you, you make it to an empty bit of shore on the uh, on the main island itself. Uh, there's uh, sort of curious uh, tourists are sort of looking at you because every little bit of beach is covered by a resort on the main island at this point. Uh, you you bring your hover bikes uh, uh, in uh, for impromptu landing. Check the hover bikes for damage. There's a couple singes here and there, but uh, nothing, uh, nothing particular, cri nothing particularly critical. As uh, you check the uh, check the crate over, it's like there's no blast marks on it. It's not been jostled or cracked, so it's like the light water uh, vials look to be the light water case looks to be intact. Uh, so uh, you uh, basically take off back. Uh, Take up higher into the sky and uh, and then fly over to the main space, the main spaceport uh, in the back. Uh, meet up with Smitty. Uh, it's like and uh, it's like it's like Smitty looks you over. And it's like all right, do you want to be to hold this stuff for you, or uh, you're gonna be taking it? Uh, you're gonna be taking it to Liz uh, immediately. I'm sorry, Serena. I think we probably need to get it to Serena, don't we? She's the one that's going to get it off planet. Is that right? Yeah, Serena will get it off planet. Yeah, uh, yeah let's. Get I don't it know out if she here. has something. I don't know if she has something like right now. You may need to store this stuff, stuff like temporarily, uh, unless you already have plans with Serena, basically on where to drop it off. You might want to contact her. <laughs> yeah, let's contact her because I think the commissar's a little stirred up right now. So we want to make sure that, you know, we can duck down and, and it's safe. So let's contact Serena. Um, who has the you got Serena safe house? Yeah, basically, Serena sounds a little tense on the other end of the line. It's like, what the hell happened, basically, on the island? Oh, there were animals. This was supposed to be, a, basically, this was supposed to be a simple milk run. What the hell happened over there? No, something else was going on at the same time, and there were these, um, something was popping in from the chaos demons that looked like giant hydras. And they ate most of the people on the dock and about half of the commissaire's crew. And we just happened to be there at the same time. So most of that is not due to us. If they blame it on us, don't believe it. Well, whatever. We need to get off planet. Uh, we will have to get off of planet immediately before they shut down all ship. Uh, all basically off planet travel. I recommend that because it's going to be really bad once they get over there to investigate that. Uh, so, Serena, it's like, all right. So, meet me at uh, midnight at uh, at uh, dock dock thirty nine uh, in the hub. So it's it's in the far back end uh, in the reclamation area where they're currently doing re renovations. Essentially, it'll all be marked down as uh, closed for construction. Ignore that. Just bring the case straight on through. No one's going to stop you, especially that late in the evening. Okay, So, excellent. All right, so do you... Uh, okay, so everybody, I assume you do whatever short rest healing you're going to do at this point, so yeah, short rest heal. That's exactly what I'm thinking. So right now, a lot of you are trying to figure out where to exactly to lay low. The uh, 
most of the uh, island is uh, most of the archipelago area basically is a and the island are uh, are resorts essentially they're trafficked by all sorts of people uh, and unfortunately you're not the type of people that uh, basically uh, that stand out like a sore thumb in that particular environment uh, you haven't as of got yet gone to the reef which is the underwater part of the city uh, to see what that is like so far uh, but you do basically have a contact down there with uh, with uh, Vorcha the uh, the sort of squiddy guy <laughs> so uh, it's like you could try to sort of rely on your holo fields uh, to keep you uh, out of uh, out of uh, public sight uh, during the uh, during the couple hours you have to wait, uh, or alternately you could go down to uh, or alternately you could go to the outer darkness area where the nomads and castouts from uh, the shelter basically hang out, which is effectively the slums and it's sort of like an outer ring of like floating cities and uh, casinos and gambling dens that uh, sort of belong to uh, the outcasts. So where do you want to go? So it's probably the Outer Darkness for you or the Reef, I'm guessing. Did Serena have any suggestions where we should hang out? Serena simply says, I don't care where you hang out, just don't get cut. <laughs> Okay, sounds cool. Okay, cut or caught? Caught. So the reef is touristy stuff, and then the slums is all The reef is an underwater city. Uh, you haven't actually been there. Uh, oh, the okay. island, which is the above ground area, are all resorts. Uh, unfortunately, this is like saying I'm gonna go hat. I'm gonna go hat. I'm gonna go try to lay low at Sandals Resort, basically in Montego Bay. It's not exactly. Yeah. It's not exactly an easy place to hide. And it's underwater, and so I think that there's a possibility for a lot of things to go wrong. Whereas, like, the sort of people that we could run into trouble with in a slummy gambling sort of den, I think we have more experience with that. What do you guys okay. think? Do you want to go underwater, or do you want to go uh, check out the slums? I think underwater would be the best idea. That'd be the least likely place these commissaries might be. Well, the slums, too, though. We've blended in better with the slums, I think. Yeah, and I don't think that they're going to be going in there. Because there are kind of people. That's what I think. Yeah, and much. there's more of them. I, I bet the commissars don't mess with them that much. And if they do, you know, um, and we fight with them, we'd probably get some help. <laughs> Alright, the, uh... All right, the uh, the you're you're right now in the uh, in the island area with the the resort area per se. The you're sort of park next to uh, next to, uh, park next to a beach cantina bar and sucking down the cocktails at the moment and wearing your sunglasses and your hat's sort of like slung low. Uh, the uh, the uh, about that period of time, basically, the uh, the holovid feed that is behind the bar, basically, your faces start rotating with large credit sums, basically, of bounties. They're going, well, shit. <laughs> well, shit. Does that work even though we were disguised? Darn it. Yeah, we were disguised like the dock workers, right? Yeah. I would say you're seeing there's basically some sort of reconstruction of your face uh, from through some sort of demasking technology. All right, guys, this is the last time. Next time we do something goofy, we're all wearing Nixon masks, okay? <laughs> yep. All right. All right. So it's not a it's not perfect by any means. So it's just like if you hey, as people look were fat, to look scrutinize you very carefully they probably couldn't put uh two or two together but as i'm, I'm saying they generally got your size and build and gender correct at this point <laughs> like so i'm like i guess we these might... imperial criminals are wanted for wanted for uh, for high treason again uh 
against the shelter of the righteous and the uh, high priest of the Levitian. If you see these individuals, uh, like, call Crime Stoppers at one eight. <laughs> I knew they were gonna blame everything on us. Well, I thought we go. Well, yeah, I think we need to go to the slum place, and I think we need to all have different disguises than we had before. Um, if we're going to go to an area that um, is doing reclamation work and renovation, maybe we need to be looking like construction workers. Although we're at the slums already. No, we. No, I'm just saying you have the choice of going to the reef or uh, the outer darkness, uh, which is. Effectively, the slums. <laughs> so. and, and because we didn't choose, Lawrence has made it interesting for us where we are. So we need to pick one and do it. Because <laughs> all of you are basically going pulling your hats down and your sunglasses up and everyone and your collars up, going, "Well, this is uh, this is really awkward." Like, yeah, I want to get. And you're and you're going. It's like we only got basically uh, only about 10, 20 minutes left on the uh, the holo disguised fields at this point. Uh, it's like as you're trying to like plot charge your your holo disguise under uh, underneath the bar. At this point. At this point. Crow, which where how do you want to? Wanna... How long do we have until we have to leave the planet? Midnight, about six hours away. And how far away is the fire of storms? Fire of storms, essentially on hover bikes. Uh, it's probably not possible to get to because there's a standing hurricane around it. Uh, so uh -huh. you actually have to get there using a dropship or uh, or interplanetary shuttle. Got it. Which? How long? Yeah, we can't. That's okay. Um, a good thing it's not feasible anyway. to get there with rubber bikes at all. So you'd have yeah. All right. It's, um, not, it's the eye of storms because it's literally sitting in the middle of a hurricane. Yeah, yeah I know. Um, let's um, what do you call? It? Let's go to the slums. Okay, you uh, jump on your hover bikes, uh, pay off your tabs. Everybody, drop uh, ten credits essentially for drinks. <laughs> that one was uh, and... really good, though. They have nice alcohol here. Oh yeah, they do have nice alcohol around here. As uh, as. Uh, as the as Mina's basically putting a paper umbrella basically in her helmet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you jump on your hover bikes. Uh, the uh, the uh, and start heading out towards the outer bank slash outer darkness. The uh, on the it takes you roughly about uh, an hour with a flight to get there. It's relatively far away. Uh, even at uh, even flying your hover bikes 100 miles an hour or so, the uh, you've got a good altitude at this point, and your your hover bikes at this point here are beginning to show like uh, some charge degradation at this point. You only got about 25 to 30 uh, percent charge left on the hover bikes. They're only good for about like two hours of sustained flight. Uh, you. Uh, you land, there's, uh, it's just, uh, if you imagine basically the smokers out of Waterworld, they're sort of like village full of basically smoky, greasy diesel fumes, uh, like wash over this whole area continuously. Everything has a patina of soot on it. Uh, n there are no electrical lights. They're just like torches effectively everywhere where they're burning so what appears to be methane or natural gas. Uh... The it is uh, it is pretty dark at this point. Uh, your the day cycle uh, on this planet is kind of relatively short. It's only uh, twenty hours, so at this point it's uh, like well past uh, well past dusk and into the night. Uh, you can see like uh, people effectively dressed in rags. It's like it's still modern clothing, but it's just like it's. Uh, it hasn't been uh, cleaned or washed or just the omnipresent soot over everything basically has gotten into everybody's clothes and it gets you can see it sort of streaked on their faces as well uh there's large uh sort of uh pagoda like casinos that are incredibly well lit with actual electrical lighting you can see 
uh, dotted across uh, a lot of these sort of like artificial islands here and there. Uh, and uh, there's the the one in front of you that you're sort of parked at at the front moment is the golden dragon with a large neon golden dragon sort of rearing up and roaring at the sky. Uh, the and an occasional plume of uh, of methane gas being blown off uh, to lo look like a dragon's flame coming out of its mouth. Uh, a teenage kid uh, in a valet's uh, vest uh, like walks on up to you. It's like park your bikes, like fifty creds each. Essentially, make sure they don't met get messed with. Is there a place that we can get uh, get charge on them? Yeah, I'll charge them up for you. Basically, that'll be another uh, that'll be another fifty creds each, though. Okay. So, guys, I think it would be good to have them charged up before we try and fly back and fall into the ocean. What do you think? I agree. It's worth the uh, worth the a little bit of extra safety. Yeah, I think so. Especially here. Okay. Uh, make insight checks just to make sure that because this place does not look all, all on the up and up. Let's put it that way. That's a 13 for me. 27. Uh, unnatural 20. So, uh, so Tirshan and uh, Asgul are of the opinion, essentially, we're going to probably have to pay him more than basically what he's asking if we don't want our bikes mess with. <laughs> we need to tip him something. All right, I'll tip him an extra 50. And I'll give him an extra like... 50 as well. Okay. Uh, I'll follow suit. All right, so each of you pay 150, then he uh, he nods his head as he basically thumbs in your creds into his own cred stick. Like, yeah, I'll make sure nothing happens to your bikes. Like, my word on it. Sort of like holds his two fingers up in the air as a sort of peace sign slash proof of his, proof of his word. And it's like... Welcome to the Golden Dragon. Like, as he uh, as he basically takes your bikes one by one and parks them in the garage. <laughs> hey, Tree, may yeah. I suggest leaving Adam Savage with the bikes? Good idea. Um, okay. All right, so... Uh, okay. So you put all your bikes in valet mode and, like, uh, and... Uh, and ha ha hand the keys over to the uh, to the valet. You walk in the uh, uh, dazzling uh, golden and yeah, uh, white and golden lights basically uh, dazzle the eyes as you enter a beautiful um, marble floored atrium uh, where you can see your own reflection in the dark marble floors and. Uh, Golden, uh, yellow, and white lights basically uh, twinkle uh, across the ceiling uh, like a cascade of stars above you. Uh, you can hear the bing and bong of uh, of slots and uh, random chance machines the all around you, as well as uh, flashing lights uh, and the occasional buzzer of uh, someone winning a jackpot. The uh, there's. The whole center of this casino is uh, dominated by uh, some sort of card game, uh, and then behind that, uh, a set of dice games that uh, you are all generally familiar uh, with: uh, Space Pie Gal and uh, and Space Craps. <laughs> the the uh, there, and then beyond that, there's a large dance floor uh, where. Uh, Various uh, beautiful couples are sort of whiling the evening away, dancing and drinking, and, uh, generally having a good time in bottle service. Uh, uh, up above those are uh, cages with uh, go-go dancers in scantily clad uniforms of men and women, and uh, and you're not quite sure what gender that is, but uh, they're aliens, so uh, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> so whatever floats your boat. So the uh, okay, so you're uh, you're taking a moment to lie low in here. The uh, what are you doing basically with your giant crate of stuff? By the way, 
I think we should keep that on us, right? Till it you're just carting it around behind you. Don't trust anybody with it. Yeah. Um, no, I, I don't. Wait, how sturdy is this crate? Can I disguise it to look like a scooter? Like I'm disabled and I have a scooter? <laughs> you very high up on it, but yes, you could. Uh, you okay. can certainly make it look. That's you got to remember, it's still a it's still a five foot tall box. That's so just well, like, okay. Yeah. It's like, well, that's what I want. That's what I wanted to say is, I'm a bird. I don't weigh that much. I can ritually cast fog cloud on this thing twenty four seven to make it look like I'm just sitting like I'm a monk. I remember, cloud. fog cloud is like is huge. It's like twenty or thirty feet across. So it's like. Mm -hmm. Like 30 to 40, oh, 30 foot oh, radius. So, okay, so if I cast Reduce on it, does that break all the stuff? This is one of those things, like, Mina does not want to try this out. Okay, yeah. Now we're, now so we're trying You already told it had, like, light water has weird interactions with dimensional, <laughs> dimensional effects. Okay. No, I do not want to and blow up our payday. Oh, <laughs> oh, can we can we pop it up into Rep Trick? That would take it for an hour, right? We could pull it up into Rep Trick. That's just... well, dimensional. Again, dimensional. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm thinking in the box. If anything, I think we should just get a room here. Yeah. Okay, you pull up. You have Minor Illusion, right? Yes. All right, so you just make it look like a, lug like a pile of luggage. <laughs> so... Great. Pretty much, we have a we have a dolly of luggage. Okay, so you're just like your hover hover sled worth of a lot of luggage, which is not unusual. Uh, you pull up to the uh, you pull up to the check in desk. The uh, a uh, woman that has uh, has had her complete skin replaced by some sort of like gold sheen metal uh, chrome is uh, standing behind the desk, basically smiling at you. Uh, it's like. Welcome to the Golden Dragon. How can I help you? How long until... Uh, this is DM question. How long until we need to um, leave? You need uh, in about five hours, but you could just rent a room effectively. Uh, you're guessing they're not going to rent you by the hour. By, so this is like a normal yeah, resort type establishment. So yeah. you... So like a Vegas casino. So you, uh, you show up the... 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 Uh, the clerk... Uh, the desk clerk. Fine. All right. Uh, could I get uh, Could I get a copy of all your IDs, please? You all realize this is a tremendously bad idea because it's like yeah. As soon as those get plugged into any sort of network, you're going to raise all sorts of like legal alarm bells. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, that... I just want to give me about ten. But minutes. you're also basically in the slummy ass part of town, so anything can be solved with money around here. Do you want me to try and go? I'm whispering to my partner. I'm gonna go and try and acquire an ID. All right. Do you want to just try to forge some IDs, basically, before you get in here? Well, I was yeah. gonna go steal one. Guy says them, but steal, Asgul, whatever you feel comfortable with. I, I trust your discretion for this. Or, or maybe we just need to bribe her. Either way should work. So, what do you want to do? Hmm. We could go for the direct approach of bribery, saying we need to lay low for about five hours. After five hours, we'll be out. Yeah, That's it. We, just we will pay rest. you. For our most discerning guests, we offer uh, this confident, our confident, confidential penthouse, uh, a mere five hundred credits. Uh, that'll that'll work. I can spit that's up. Like, that's like like one twenty five each, right? Or something. Well, there's only three of us now, but oh. uh. Whatever Lawrence, one twenty-five each or like two two twenty each, Lawrence. Let's just go with let's just go with two hundred each to basically to make it okay. a nice round figure essentially. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that works. All right. So uh, you pay her. Uh, you pay her the five hundred. You tip her a hundred basically. So for extra discretion, it's wow. like you never saw us. You never saw us. <laughs> she hands over. She hands over a code key to the penthouse suite. Well. Welcome to the Golden Dragon. Essentially, enjoy your stay, uh, though short as it is. Uh, is should you need anything? Should, should, should you need anything? Our concierge service is is twenty four se is is twenty seven, <laughs> such as twenty day, twenty hour day. Yeah. Uh, and you, uh, 
Is this place, like, bougie enough that we can get a long rest in five hours, or is that still too short? Uh, that is too short. Okay. So, effectively, you have a short rest at this point. Uh, we can have and... a several short rests, but yeah, okay. Um, okay. In this time, I would like to... Do we still have the, um, the Imperial Communicator yeah. node that allows us to, like, tap into the Imperial network? Yes, you do. And remember how um, Amas tracked us the last time? Yeah, but I thought we just tabled that. There are pros and cons for using it, right? So it's like... Mm -hmm. Rose yeah. is like you can get into the Imperial Network and try to scrub your your records essentially, or basically slow down people basically putting warrants out for you. <laughs> so. So we can try that, but if we don't roll. That's the well, pros and the cons is if you screw up, essentially you've pretty much drawn attention to your location immediately. <laughs> yeah. So here's my thought. Um, we could. Like, after, like, the last hour we're here, right? We could use it, or I could use it, and um, get a little bit more research in, Maybe. and then by the time we're done using it, we're already ready to skedaddle off planet. But this is why I want it to be a group decision. Maybe, maybe one of us can do it and another can do a help action. And I've still well, yes, got, I would assume that's a I've, given. And I've still got, and we'll dump whatever guidance and inspiration and crap we've got on it. I've still got two plus five. Um, but, yeah, I got enhance ability. Yeah, it would be a great idea to try and scrub these uh, warrants and, or maybe just change it to different people. Who, who's, who are we mad at that we could put a warrant on? Other than the Inquisitor with the stick up his ass. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's you cannot put a warrant on an, uh, on a commissar. That's just not happening. <laughs> so, yeah. Damn I was about it. to say. <laughs> that doesn't seem very feasible. All right. You guys are no fun. I mean, I want to, but <laughs> No, no. Lawrence is right. I'm saying from a practical standpoint that is not happening. That is like saying it's like I'm hey. going to I'm gonna uh, go and criminate a police captain somewhere, basically, that has the highest level of access to the Imperial Network. So really, that is just probably not happening. Anybody who's cheesed us off, we've just killed them so far, so we don't really have a trail of anybody that we need to um, pay back. Anybody I'll not general. At the. That, uh... Or any of the people around that race? Didn't some people mess with us at that race situation? I don't think we ever found out who those were, the, uh, the spies uh, for the raid. Okay. Well, think of who you want to blame it on, and yeah, let's get in there and see what we can find out, and then um, if it goes badly, let's get out quickly. Um, so we need okay. to leave about 11 to make it back to the uh, place to meet. Yes, Dana. to make it back by midnight, you need to leave roughly about 11 from here. Uh, Leave it okay, so you've got minutes. about four hours rest in uh, the. You order some room service for fifty credits each, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna do. Everybody can everybody can pick up an inspiration basically for having nice room service. <laughs> Aww. and I'm gonna um I'm gonna use my last two hit die. And as far as healing from hit dice, everybody uh, everybody gets an additional, uh, what is it? Let's say an additional D8 for just being in nice oh, accommodations. Great place to heal. Hey, Lawrence? Mm -hmm. um, when I used that blaster, it brought me back into a, a four insanity. Okay, so you do need to roll on the insanity table, yes. Okay. That's what, uh, 100? D100, yeah. Uh, let's see. I, can... I got a 10 on the one thing and then a 3 on the other. So that's 13. All right. 13. Lucky 13. And I'm back to max. Yay. All right. So you uh, you develop Christia Decophobia, the irrational, irrational fear of the number 13. <laughs> You got, what? Is that seriously what it is? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Oh my god, that's amazing. 
I mean, it's probably a pretty good thing to be afraid of because, like, I mean, I'm going to love to see... This is either going to go hilarious or it's going to go well for us because oh. Lawrence is either going to make this really funny or it's not going to be that big of an issue. How, how um, big could you be afraid of a number? Okay. Well, what number is our room? I predict uh, with my crystal ball that this number is going to become much more common than we expected. <laughs> okay, uh, you're uh, you're on the fourteenth floor, but uh, you're sort of realizing, wait a minute, stuff. Don't they always renumber basically hotel uh, rooms, basically? So there's no thirteenth floor. So they this is technically the thirteenth floor. Yeah. As Asgol is basically dwelling on this weird bit of menu. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, we'll pick it up here next week, essentially, as you go uh, go to like try to We're leave. On the run. Planet. But this is a good time to break, is any? So. Well, it, it is. It that is. was a lot of fun, Lawrence. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was, that was I'm fun. Gonna, I'm going to stop the recording. Yay. Good night. Good night, good night guys. Everybody.